Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you. As a thank you so much for the coach, Alan. It's a beautiful one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, Luke Crimes. Luke Crimes is back. So what you're going to learn here today is how to fit the um, BMW R19 Racer High Rise Link Pipe. Um, you're going to learn from start to finish on how to do this on this classic race bike. Let's go for it. It's showtime. <laughs> So Luke Cry getting into a bit of a problem because he's removing the titanium macroprovic uh, slip-ons from the classic BMW race bike but also what was happening was the valve module was coming away with the slip-on. Now the thing is that's not really what's supposed to happen. What's supposed to happen is the valve unit stays in place and further investigation, if you look at the two exhaust clamps, there's one clamp on the catalytic converter side, and there's one clamp for the slip-on, but there's, there's another exhaust piece in the middle where the valve, or the, the valve module sits. And it's as if this clamp here holds this piece in the middle where the valve module is and the valve system is, but it's this forward clamp here that then holds the slip-on in place. So we're going to give this another bash and see what happens. You're learning at the same time as you're filming. Not a, well, not the easiest thing in the world. So what you want to do is, again, we're, we're disassembling the exhaust hanger very gently. And it's very pretty as well. It's silver, aluminium. What we want to try and do is not let the tool slip and then scratch that lovely bit of, of aluminium there because don't want to damage it, it just doesn't look nice then but it... oh. no, not easy and yeah, looks factory, looks very pretty okay, so let's see what happens, the theory is now is what was supposed to happen in the first place. The slip-on has come away. Hey, hey! One twin shotgun acroperovic titanium to undo the servo which is this Torx bolt here with a black washer which we need to um, remove. has that Torx holding it on and then you push it backwards. backwards and you can see here that it was on the rubber mount was on that metal pin there ah yes so yes whole, you can the whole contraption has to go backwards, has in order to get backwards. To be removed. you can't just remove it because there'll be an electrical connector somewhere so which we need to find a torch that's me wiggling it off because what we we and found then it's going down, so it's come mm. back and down. Back and down. And now I can I found the electrical connector right on the back of it. Right so, the so the servos come back and down, and then there's the loom that the servo body's gonna connect to, and then we just gotta get this off in order to release the servo. You can't feel with a pick, you know, you can't like no. it ain't your fingers, is it? Oh, it felt like it fucking moved then. All I've done is use a pick to remove the terminal. Quality. Look at that. Hmm. And then out comes the servo. And then with that one undone, the valve assembly will come off. Huh. There's the butterfly valve. Just there. Uh, so how does the servo body, what does the servo body do then? The servo body is going to connect to that this, unit. and then we're going to cable tie it up out of the way. Probably, like, 
out the way somewhere. Right. And then it's going to lie to the bike. Right in the depths of the frame of the classic BMW race bike, classic super bike, that electrical connector there that's just there uh, in black, a long wire coming out of it. That is the controller for the exhaust valve. Your exhaust valve is this honking great big emissions controlling crap here that is holding back this mighty engine. Okay, this is why we're undoing now the second exhaust clamp. Being careful not to hit the frame, this gorgeous BMW classic superbike. We don't want to hit the frame. We just want to undo this piece here. It'd be nice if we can try and get a bit more light in there for you. Press the torch up against the tire or the beamer and then Luke Rice and only feel the link pipe is loose. Yeah, it is loose. It, it, it's actually coming out now. You can actually feel it coming out. Wow. Comes the exhaust valve unit. Holy mother! And... Wow. Make sure I can get a sweep from here. You just want to film that bit, not me. To get away, come away with you. Yeah. Beautiful. So we have successfully, which is crucial to, to removing the factory system, we have successfully loosened off. The BMW O2 sensors sitting there in the exhaust system. We used a large 22 inch spanner, and effectively, what we want to do is take the spanner, make sure you've got the best fit possible over the nut, and then using a hammer, hit the roundy end of the spanner and keep doing that until that nut releases and then away you go and this O2 sensor is now fully released well, is is loose but now we're in the process of actually releasing it from its holder beyond a big quality This is the tiniest little tool no crying to suffer around ever used. You don't get much leverage now, mate. You don't get much leverage at all. So kind of like worry, that worry of rounding off the heads. Ugh. Oh, what a handy tool. This little tool has literally been able to get into this tiny gap. And there's a... Uh, Wow, actually the bolts, well, what you can do 
is if you can just get the, the bolts themselves just loose enough, you can start to undo them by hand effectively if you want to. Kind of saves saves time because you know by this point after you're starting to use tools you kind of get a good idea of what's um, clockwise. Clockwise is undo in, uh, in garagey garagey speak undo and what's tighten. Okay so that's that's the bolts for the exhaust hangers now starting to come away um, and great stuff we have a jack in position so it's just a matter of now you see how the clamp is is now just starting to you can actually just see it with see with the human eyes actually just see it now just see it starting to starting to undo you can actually see the clamp now actually giving way to the oh this one's a bit of a fucker it's usually quite language but when you work when you're working on a well, anything mechanical, you're going to feel like swearing. It's just hard work. It really is hard work. None of it. None of it's easy. Okay. Well, we are starting to... Um, oh, no. Does it put it... Fucking put it into... Tighten up. We don't want to tighten up. We want to undo, you bugger. No! Oh, my God. Luke Christ is getting himself all confused, man. Get yourself confused. What on do? We don't want Titan. Ah, oh, fuck! <laughs> Luke Rice to see what he's doing wrong. <sighs> ah! Yeah, this this exhaust bolt. The one furthest away from Luke Rides is um Yeah, it's not playing uh, it's not being very nice. It's actually put up a little bit of a fight to undo by hand, really. There is some sort of Oh I'm focused on my phone. It's supposed to be an intelligent phone, it's not being a dick. Is there some sort of silver paste? On the um, on the actual exhaust uh, centre cap bolt, centre clamp bolt. That area, it's very exposed to the elements. Where usually this is where exhaust clamp bolts will rust. And uh, BMW Motorrider are trying to give those bolts the best chance they can of of not going crusty and rusty. So top marks to BMW. That is BMW engineering quality. It's all one unit. It's all one unit right from the headers. All the way back. Past the both banks of O2 sensors. To the catalytic converter. So now the catalytic converter is free. The next job is to remove the flange nuts here. Remove them. And then what will happen is this entire piece, this is what we would call the headers at this point, this, this entire factory BMW system, which we would call the headers, is now going to come away. And make sure you're happy. Um, and before you undo those flange bolts, um, obviously a professional tip is make sure you have somewhere for the exhaust headers to go. Uh, where you're not going to scratch the the cats or the factory system, just in case the next owner may crazy may may want it, may want to keep hold of it in case. Even though you just know with a four acre private titanium system, you're never going back. Just moved on to a smaller ratchet that can just get into this more confined space. Yeah, we have. Oh, fucking, it's not bloody ideal, is it? Okay, and it feels like we're definitely, yeah, we're definitely on the head. So that's, that's great, the head fault. Here we go, here's some force. Here's some force for you at, oh God. Okay. Really could do a bigger tool. Oh. 
Okay, the bastard's not um it's not moving. It's not Obviously we don't want to damage this area either. <sighs> I think that's what it's actually doing. Oh, fucker is as well. God damn it. You bastard. Actually trying to deshape this thin here. Why is nothing ever straightforward? And I was thinking you didn't want to cause any damage to your, your lady. I know, it was like that in the factory. That's good to know. <laughs> hey, attempt mark two. Ah. Attempt mark two, successful. Okay, we have movement on this head bolt as well. Now we just need to take the appropriate tools and we need to go to the other side, to the other, to the second cylinder. Ratchet actually sits on the extension and is on an adjustable joint just to help us get into the uh, this bolt here, the second bolt that's just between the head and the actual exhaust piece that's just very tricky to get a ratchet and the socket in there. It's not BMW's fault, that's just how they, they design these cylinders like that for a reason. Make sure we set to what we do. And that came off, that came off nicely as well. So that's looking actually pretty good. Okay, at this point you're going to want a um, you're going to want the 12 millimeter deep uh, deep socket. Let's just undo it. Break the, the headers away, and then just take it from there. Really. So what you need to now do is you need to look at the. Um, you need to look at the front exhaust system, the headers, where the pipes now go into the cylinders, and you have one um, flange nut here, and a second one at the bottom. And now what you're going to do is you're just going to take your time, and you're going to undo um, the flange nuts. And they really are just they're actually nuts on a thread. Which is quite, quite interesting. Uh, they are greasy. Uh, titanium. Oh, this is very important. Titanium under no circumstances, which we're going to repeat later on, as well on this episode. Do not get your fingerprints on the um. Damn it, so greasy. Under no circumstances do you do you bloody get uh, grease on titanium. Uh, do not get your fingers on titanium. Don't let your skin contact titanium because once you do, once you do, you leave a grease. Oh, this one's being alright, little fucker. It's not just. It's just undoing. Oh, this angle. This angle sucks balls. Ah, it's interesting because these these bloody nut, nuts, flange thingies are um, greasy. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, the flange nuts come away. Okay, and then move on to the other side. Cool. cool. Uh, same procedure. Bring your tools with you. And then the same procedure for the second cylinder. Which we are removing the uh, factory system. Let's see, take your time. Yeah, and 
classification these um fans bolts are oh, these fans bolts are a little bit corroded oh, they are they're just a little bit corroded um so so you don't might make Lucroid's mistake here is for the last flange nut that sits in inside deeper inside the uh, the cylinder for both sides is if you get a, a tool like this in there and then you put force down in order to start undoing the, the nut what you'll do is the, the force of your tool will then put pressure on this edge here of the cylinder and you could actually mark the the cylinders you could actually mark the black factory paint and mark it and if you mark it well um, you know you, you damage that beautiful line because the force of your tool has pushed the, the paint in um, yeah you're not you're not repairing that you're not going to fix it so what you can do if you love your motorcycle uh, love your your R19 racer is what you can do to help yourself is take a smaller tool like this with an adjuster that will get in that gap and then you can put your force down to undo the flange nut but the tool isn't coming into contact with the cylinder and if you're a petrol head and you love your baby that's a top tip for you recording okay you've got to be careful though because see what we do well ah okay so luke Christ can actually see that there is a problem with this because what's going to happen is that as this releases Ah, oh, this is a real pain in the butt, actually. What we want to do is have a little bit of give. Between. Okay, this is where we've got to be uh, very careful now at this point because what we don't want to do is we don't want to damage little things like Ah, oh, actually. It's not easy when you've got to do this by yourself because it doesn't want to just come away, you know? Ah, oh, I mean, this one's happily happy to come away, but. Ah. It's the jack. The jack is in the way. It's stopping the... The jack is actually in the way. It's actually in the way, to be honest. Are we completely free? We are. Okay, we are completely free. That's the exhaust clamp. Exhaust clamp is in the way. Ah, we'll maneuver out of the way. Ah, oh, we don't want to scratch the frame. Yeah, that's the problem. What we don't want to do is we don't want to scratch the beautiful BMW frame. Obviously, here we don't want to damage it or mark it. Obviously, BMW had the reason, but if we could just. Oh, all the money. Let's bring the. Like we've been very good as well we've been able not to get marks um, on the ports themselves so that is fan melody tested now oh god Luke Rice is making all sorts of noises now isn't he now we need to somehow bring this massive BMW system ah. Love it. 
Again, we don't. Again, we don't want to mark the. Um, so we don't want to mark the cylinders. Do you know what required means? We don't want to mark the cylinders, damage the, the engine casing, or mark it in any way. We need. We want this just to, just to release. Um, some other things we actually might be able to do is if we pull the jack out of the way. Oh god! And just let let the exhaust system rest. Cool. Uh -huh. Okay. Check for any potential damage on the um, paintwork side of things on this edge here. But it looks good. We have cleared a massive gravy port. On the R90 racer, on this classic superbike, don't just instantly now fit the titanium headers because actually on having a good look closer inspection is you can see there's a difference between the exhaust port and there's like a silver ring going around there that's not a part of the actual engine block that is a exhaust gasket that was crushed in during the factory when it was first fitted but the thing is, is this gasket they're designed to be crushed in and now this gasket we can't be absolutely certain that it's going to actually perform its job and create a, a seal so we're just being very careful with the pick and trying to get into the edges of the gasket just to help stop breaking it free and also being careful not to scratch the outer the outer engine casing at the same time all diving into the the port so you can actually feel it starting to just starting to break away you just got to pick an edge stop working it then take your pick and eventually it's going to come out but take note of the orientation it's coming out and it has to come out as one piece. Okay. Uh, and there are divots in there. Welcome to the acrobromic system. Ain't it a sight? Don't you want to stare at it? Uh, what we're going to do before we make any more progress is what you can actually do is take a, a can called WD-40 and we're just going to wipe down the uh, titanium wipe it all down so it's looking as, as pretty as possible and then um, we're going to get started how exciting is that feel how light this is this titanium system is Oh yeah, so what we can do is use a, a liquid called WD-40, really amazing, very powerful liquid, outstanding. Um, and what it can do is safely clean the titanium for you without risking um, putting anything on there that you, you shouldn't. And uh, as well, it's going to make the titanium look nice and shiny. And Luke Rides, honestly, he can't emphasize this enough, you must wear gloves when handling titanium okay you must wear gloves you cannot get your skin your oils on the titanium or once the bmw 1200 cc beast of an engine fires up and heats up this titanium you will then get a burn mark in your titanium from the oil left by your hands and once that happens you can't you can't clean it off it's burned into the titanium so you don't want that to happen even if you want to every so often change your gloves even that's a good idea the way to look at it everybody at Luke Wright is think about the fact that gloves are a heck of a lot cheaper than titanium so don't be afraid to change your gloves every so often um, so that's the titanium cleaned up using beautiful WD-40 and now we need to start putting this puppy together. Uh, we actually need to start putting this unit together now. 
So we're going to do that. And this is the collector pipe here, which sits. Oh my god, funny how it even rotates inside. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Look at that. It rotates inside. Ah, right, it rotates inside, but uh, Luke Rides is assuming what you've got to do actually. Oh yeah. Wow, it's, whoa, isn't that interesting? You've got to do it in such a way that the collector lines up with the the springs are going to be going in, inside Whoa. that hold this entire system together so make sure what you've got to do is just take your time and line where the springs are going to be well fucking hell was that easy or what um well, that's interesting uh, all right. Okay, that no, that can't be right. Why does one side look longer than the other? Fuck me, one side is longer than. Oh, there is actually a difference. Check that out. There actually is a difference. There really is. So, actually, one pipe here is longer into the upper collector and the right hand the right hand cylinder has a shorter pipe going into the collector wow that's really interesting luke chris did not know that wow isn't that fascinating there is like a reason why uh, yeah. ah, try not to smash the titanium into each other Mm. Well, this isn't easy. What the fuck? Alright, this really isn't easy. What the hell's going on here? Yeah! Stop being a fighter! Stop fighting it! God damn you! Oh! Oh no! Hey! Oh, don't come apart. Hey! Get back in the... Hey! What the motherfucker? Oh my god. That goddamn jigsaw. Okay, so that's what we want. Somehow this is all gonna line up. Which you'd assume it just kind of happened naturally as it all comes together. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Ah, okay, 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 okay. So you need to bring the the Right, 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 okay, okay, okay. Luke Christ is starting to understand the titanium now. Which is you got you've got to bring the longer pipe into the shorter pipe and the shorter pipe into the longer pipe and it all just it all just comes together. Eventually. <laughs> Luke Rice said that eventually. <laughs> eventually it all just comes together. Um uh, uh, you don't want to bend or damage the titanium either. Uh, uh, that just don't feel like it's as in as it could be. Uh, doesn't it? Uh, no. That does not look right, does it? Ah, uh, what's Luke Rides missing here? Luke Rides is missing something in this hole. <clears throat> it feels like it's supposed to go in a little bit further than this. Oh, spring... Oh yeah, spring, spring holds match up, so that's good. <sighs> We now have the full titanium system uh, together. In the beginning, we did it with Luke Rides and an amazing family. We noticed that there was a problem where the upper headers were at an angle. So, we've just been spending time actually taking the upper headers out, 
figuring out what the problem is, and then lining the upper headers back up, pushing it all together, tapping in the right areas. Acropavic say that if you need to, you can use a rubber mallet if necessary. And what you want to do, uh, what can help, is a technique where if you take the, say this piece of the upper header, and slide it in and out, of this join while rotating it at the same time and you you engraving like a marker into the titanium of how far you need to go to be absolutely sure you really have put the the joins in as far as they can go and then finished with springs um, also um, so now you need to make sure there's no springs on the flanges as you can see here we need to make sure there's no springs and then have your flange nuts ready. Gaskets. We have a genuine BMW motor ad gaskets from the factory for our outstanding R90 racer. So uh, let's remove the upper springs. And we've also really cleaned the system using a rag and as well um, rag and WD-40 um, as well alright let's give this a whirl <coughs> yeah this is bloody awkward <laughs> oh wow the spring's tight oh fuck oh fuck Oh my god. Okay, hello everyone, Luke Cried. What a mission taking off the exhaust flange taking the actual header the entire taking the entire system off the uh, mighty BMW race bike so this is the next stage we need to remove this clamp here because actually a, a different piece is going to go in its place because it is a titanium straight pipe it means that this clamp is too wide in order to, to fit. So we actually need to remove this clamp. We'll be staring at this clamp. Um, we need to remove it. We have to remove it from the BMW race bike, classic race bike. But you're probably wondering, hang on a minute, I can't see a bolt head. What do I do? How, how do I get this clamp out of the way? Luke Rides kids, you know everybody, watch this. Oh, it just wiggles off. Be careful with the frame again. Um, what you're doing as well by cleaning that area up is you're actually giving the tool or the uh, the socket that's going to go in there a bit of an easier time. Plus, it clears out all the gunk in that area that could get in the way of the, the tool. So, in this area here where the catalytic converter once was, this is the exhaust hanger clamp that um that it sits on and it's fixed in place by two t30 torques now the one the torques to the right hand side you can get a ratchet in there not too not too hard small ratchet and you'll be able to get to that torques bolt on the right hand side which is easy but it's the top left one that's a bugger because the top left one is in a very small gap, a very small space, and it has this very interesting BMW connector in there. So you'd be wondering, well, I can get this ratchet there, and this is where you need a quite a thin, a thin tool like this from Blue Point that will just about get you in there where you can then just push that electrical electrical wire just out of the way and you can get your T430 socket 
on that one to the top left. And then if you're in Britain or Europe, you would then push that way to undo. But that just took a little bit of, um, just a little bit of figuring out because the, trying to get a ratchet on that, that Torx bolt to the top left was not happening. And it was like, well, how else are you supposed to undo that? That's why you have a tool kit with all these special tools and that just help you through these difficult, difficult dilemmas. And um, that one is now loosened off and that one has loosened off. And now we need to undo this um, bracket as an Acroprovic titanium bracket is going in its place. Woohoo! <laughs> And now what we'll do is give this puppy the good clean that it deserves. Okay, so it's a bit of a oh, oh, just slid in nice and easy. So that is uh, Acropropic Constructions. Oh, that we're to take the factory BMW exhaust header clamp bracket, and that is to sit into this rubber booty. Acroprovic, and this will fix the titanium in place um, where the catalytic converter used to be, and that's feeling pretty rock solid. Makes life a little easier. Now onto the next stage. Can do as well is you're just going to clean off the studs and the flange nuts go, and you're just going over the threads. Removing any little bits of dirt, anything that could get onto those threads. Um, Luke Rudd's found that they actually went out greasy from the factory, so no grease required. Back on. Smart. Smart move. Ah. I like it. And then the paint on the other side. Oh dear, so, thank you. Alright, well you can. It's like the work, isn't it? Try and make your life as easy as possible. Yeah. Okay, so I know, yeah, I know which hole I need to aim for. And then just put it back. Have a spring flange! Fur out, ma'am! Yay! There you go, flange. Ooh. Now the springs are ready to go, and less factory. Don't cross thread them. Go on, you, go on your thread. There you go. You're happy now, aren't you? And then last one. Now I can focus on the exhaust hanger, and then move on to the staves. So everyone at Luke cries, here is a top tip from the amazing Debbie, because she has been able to see this a little bit outside the box, which is to make life easier for yourself, because each sleeve has its own Acroprovic uh, exhaust spring, you're going to need to pull the spring to the hook on the header pipe. Now it's easier if you put the hook in on inside on the flange hole, because that way you can then take your hook tool, pull the spring back, put the spring closest to you, and then just pop it onto the hook, and you're sorted, aren't you? We're using the flange nuts just to keep the Acroprovic titanium in place, because the next port of call is going to be the exhaust hanger, which we now need to line up, start getting the torque bolts in there. Don't have to tighten them down, just need to get a good, good, good bite in there, get the bolts in and then you can work on this area of the titanium system so it's all it's coming together bit by bit hour by hour now happy that the o2 sensors are, are torqued down as much as possible and there's no twist in the wiring itself we have two springs either side of where the sleeves actually go into the cylinders here. Now in the titanium acroprovic exotica there is a hook where Luke Wright's finger is on the same location as well on the second cylinder sleeve 
the hook will be identical to the other side in the same place. And so what we need to do now is we need to take very carefully, begin to install the O2 sensor. Uh, We don't want to do as well as we don't want to damage the frets. Uh, we're going to install the O2 sensor. Remember that little twist that we did? Now, if you're happy that you've done that. Now that was counting. It's more like five turns. Okay, so Luke Ryan's actually. That felt more like five turns. So I'm going to twist the O2 sensor. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now I'm going to put it into the thread with the titanium acroprofic headers. And see how the, the wire is now looking so twisted. See, it's not looking so twisted now, which is what you want. That is so important. You don't want to put a twist in the O2 sensors. So once you're happy you've tightened the uh, O2 sensor hand tight, you're then going to take a 20, 22 millimeter spanner and you'll lock it off. You're going to tighten the thread. When we twisted it, we, we twisted the O2 sensor opposite way round. Then locked it off. Okay. Give that cable a good feel. It doesn't feel twisted. And again, lock off the O2 sensor. That feels pretty tight. And that's it, your O2 sensors are not only installed, but they're installed the proper way without leaving the wires in a twist that will eventually cause the O2 sensor, potentially the wire inside to fray and then split and then be damaged. So well done. And really you just need to take the spanner, nip it up, pretty tight so you nip it up as far as the spanner will go and um you've uh you've talked it down and the wire feels pretty good there's not much twist in it now that's um pretty outstanding the flange nuts we need to now talk them down and secure them as well uh, what is brilliant is because this is a, a huge upgrade and a big job on the R90 racer, we have actually uh, gotten the R90 racer, classic race bike, classic super bike, its uh, own fresh, genuine BMW Vange nuts. So at least when you fitted something this this beautiful and high performance, that seeing rusty nuts is uh, something you don't see. That you just get a nice a nice finish to talk them down on both cylinders. Get a um, a decent quality tool uh, torque ratchet and what you're looking for is the click that click that means you've reached 22 newton meters and that's the uh, that's the top top flange nut but now you need to also talk down the bottom as so, well and making sure that your tools as you're applying force is not hitting the Uh, engine casing 
or any any paintwork as well. Try not to do that to yourself. Yeah. Uh, oh no, that's an old. That's an old one. Is it? That's an old one as well because it's corroded. What I'd recommend is tightening them evenly. Don't nip them down to their final torque until they're both nipped up because you don't want to crush the washer unevenly. Ah, that's right. That's a good point. Thank you, Debbie. That's a good point. What you can do is because you have a a exhaust gasket that is designed to crush down. As you apply torque, as you torque down, as you torque down the sleeves. that you apply the torque evenly by what Lucarides actually means by that is take the first nut, tighten it down, give it, give it a few rotations with the ratchet and then take the socket off the top flange nut and then go to the bottom flange nut and then do the same with that one. Just a few rotations as best you can in that tight space. Go back to the top And you're going to as well. Give that a few rotations. So you're applying the force evenly. You can actually see the sleeve moving towards the cylinder, which is quite interesting when you've seen it all happen in, in reality. And what you're doing is you're applying even force on the on the crush washer, so a crusher gasket. So when the sleeve hits it, it's the it's been crushed all round evenly without which is good that's good for the crush that's good for the gasket that's good for making a good seal as well that's very good again you're going to move down to the bottom one trying to be careful with the titanium system as well you don't want to I'll put it like you don't want to scratch it. Scratch that exotica. Exotic system. Ooh. You don't want to scratch it. You don't want to damage it. You don't want to do jack shit to it. Okay, Luke Christ is just starting to feel now the flange. Nuts just starting to get tighter. Now you're getting nice and tight now, real tight. And again, you're trying to apply that, that torque down evenly. Good. You can actually hear some so you can actually hear the crushing taking place now. I'm waiting for the ratchet. Good click, like so. Okay, great stuff. Click twice. Usually what happens is if you click a ratchet, torque ratchet, twice, it either means you it's just confirmation that you have hit the torque got into the talk dead on. And once you're happy that the sleeves are flange nuts to talk down on both sides then you need to fit these re these forward springs from the sleeve into the hooks built into the uh, titanium system. You're going to need a hook tool and you just gotta be patient and force pull the string, pull the string, pull the spring back as much as you can and get at an angle where it eventually goes into those. It's not easy. And the same as well on this side. Forward springs fitted. Which is outstanding. Okay, so we have a bit of success here at Lucrite. Um The titanium system is now at least in place. 
uh, in place. And now, by manipulating the exhaust hanger, we've also been able to line it up to the bolt holes in the engine casing. So when Luke Ryan says bolt holes, um, get the camera in there. There's, uh, there's one at the top left, and then the other side is your secondary is your secondary which is kind of back here and then you've got your top one there so what you're going to do is reuse the original bmw torx bolts and then we're just going to thread them in by hand and then take it from there is as we um as we install the aluminium torque bolts is we can now um put a little bit of what is called loctite this is loctite 270 and this is just going to help strengthen the threads as we bind them in. Um, you just need a small gap, you don't need very much. And then what we're going to do is because we are going into the engine block, what we don't want to do is what is called... Oh, what we don't want to do is what is called cross-threading. Um, it's called cross-threading, which is where you are installing the bolt, and then because it hasn't quite gone in straight, is where the bolt will then... Oh, so, Can't see. Oh, I can't fucking see shit because the pipe is on the face. Please just bug off. Please do not get me at the bank stand. stuff okay so two sensors flange nuts and exhaust hanger as well all torqued down as far as much as possible and now um and again if you if you really want to just go back up there in that very tight space i knew you could get a ratchet so super tiny it's really helpful though to have a super tiny ratchet it's like super tiny, man. It's like super tiny. It's like Superman tiny. Not Superman tiny. Superman's like, whoa, Superman, Superman. They're like Superman, I love Superman. Be careful not to ram off the heads. <laughs> We need to undo both the Torx bolts either side 
and then the top mount bracket is going to sit on top of this piece here and we're actually going to re reuse these these bolts to fix on the exhaust bracket interesting so we've run into a problem on the R19 racer she's at Euro 4 and it has this charcoal canister system so when you try to fit the acrophobic high link pipe it won't fit because this charcoal canister is blocking the high link pipe but it is removable without causing the engine It is a removable system. I'm using a coarse drive extension on a ratchet. Remove this black shield plate thing. Because it's in the way. a massive module. And that is the shield bracket removed. Question is what to do next. Oh, man. One charcoal kind of 
Master, Euro 4 R19 Racer. 2017 One clip And now we are lining up the high link pipe and seeing what we're going to get. Just removing the lower screws of the T25. And I'll see if this unit moves. It does. I may have to release the two on the other side to get a little bit more perch before I can slide this up and under. Nice tie line. So make sure you're filming this entire bracket, please. Filming. So the way to set this bracket up is to have uh, the bracket bracket. Because these screws have top hats, they only fit through the piece of plastic. So it's screw, plastic, then this mount for the seat, then it, then this bracket, and that is the correct layout. At that point, the bracket will fit, and the hoops, if you want, for the rear seat or whatever you've got on the rear of your bike will work properly. If you film from here. So again, it's screw, plastic, then this goes underneath, then you mount. So all I'm going to do is start removing the 
relay from everything that's holding on to it. Being very careful not to cut into the actual loom itself. Okay, only the cable tie gets cut. And all of a sudden what we're finding now is we have more space for this relay to be relocated. So again, I'm gonna pop it inside of here, but um, I'm gonna remove a lot of this outer nonsense and thin it out a bit, okay? So the first thing to do with this outer casing is we need to thin it out a little so that we can stash it under there. So we're gonna remove this part. There's a clip here. I'm holding the clip with my thumb. And then this piece is uh, surplus to requirements, weight reduction. And now I've just got to work on this outer piece and see if that's removable too. It may not be, it may be part of the relay, but I'm still gonna check it out anyway. So the only other clip I have on this connector block and relay is a tiny little clip here. And all that does is allow me to remove the relay. So I end up with this large connector block. I can't get this entire unit up into the motorcycle without lowering here. I just don't have enough space to put it in. So we're gonna remove four screws under this unit, lower it slightly so we can get this connector block in and tidy it away. I'm going to take this relay. Now that I've undone the screws, I have enough space to pass this up and stop. There we go. And we're just going to snug it away up here where it can live out its days out of the way of trouble because we don't want to come no trouble and I think it's a much better option than uh, a unit dangling near a hot tub in an exam system than cable tying it So this is the relay now tuckable underneath the driver's seat. So this is the relay that we can now stash underneath the rider's seat, not in anyone's way. Just tighten them by hand and I'll knit them up. Can I have some light, please? Can't see. And now the other two. And you can see the space it's already freed up having the relay removed uh, one of these is for the evap canister which i'm about to remove and uh, the other one is a tank overfill so i will cable tie it somewhere out the way maybe extend it and just keep it nice and tidy
bit of a close up. And it's these two hidden ones here. So what we're trying to achieve is we're trying to move the foot peg and the gear shifter, try to move them to one side enough that we can get a tool in and we can get that torx bolt behind the R90. We can just get behind it and see if we can uh, undo it. Time to take off the rear sets and fit the exhaust. Titanium. So we're just reattaching the resets. So we've got the rear set back on. The exhaust is tightened up here. This one's only loosely tightened up because we're just still getting everything kind of in place. And then we'll be tightening up the exhaust clamps in a moment, but for first, we couldn't resist the opportunity to fit up the carbon heat shields. Uh, Akrapovich have placed Loctite on the screws so that we don't have to. Oh, it's just threading so beautifully. It's a precision instrument. Oh, 
I'm only going to tighten it hand tight. Yay, it's a really beautiful crack build. <laughs> there you go, they're nice and tight now. I'm just nipping up the carbon fiber heat shields from the crack of edge. You can see the logo through the heel guard. It's so, more nice. All right, let's do some springs before we do the top one. And the reason we're going to do the springs before we do the top carbon fiber guard is if anything goes wrong, we don't want to catch ourselves on it and risk scratching it. The Krakovich have kindly provided us with too short and too long. Uh, it's nice that the uh, rubber has their logo embossed in it. I'm going to say the longer ones look all right, but we'll also measure up the short ones. Kind of cool that they gave us uh, both. It's going to be quite a stretch. The long ones. I could fit my hand. <laughs> <Ding. Gangler. laughs> Perfect fit, man. <laughs> During, so just measuring up the exhaust springs, a Krapovich have given us uh, too long and too short. The long ones seem to be able, I seem to be able to fit them by hand. It doesn't serve for much of a purpose, although I could adjust, I suppose. And the short ones might just do it. It's going to be uh, a bit of a stretch, but I think we can do it. This is uh, a spring tool. Does that seem extreme to you? Let's see what we got. Short spring, but it doesn't seem... Seems like it's going to be under some serious tension. So I'm using a spring tool here in order to uh, fit the spring. One of the things I don't want to do is scratch the exhaust. So I'm using my thumb to cover the end of the spring tool. And uh, when fitting a spring, you always have the pointy bits on the inside. You never have them on the outside. Nice. Let's fit the top one. So here's the top spring. Make sure the Akrapovich logo is facing out towards us. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm going to use my spring tool. And the pointy end always goes in. Don't do it the opposite way around. I'm going to cover the spring tool with my fingers so that I don't end up scratching the exhaust. I think the owner would be too happy if that happened. Nice bit of tension. And that's the springs fitted. They look great. What a mission this has been so far, everyone, um, on YouTube. This is how we are looking so far. We have the top mounts, uh, which are those supplied by BMW Motorrad. BMW had this mount piece actually made in Italia, in Italy, which is quite interesting. 
So at the end can, the end can is held by springs between the high link pipe and the end can. But we need to figure this out. We also had to remove the charcoal canister system from the R90 racer. And this little, this little nib here is sticking out of, of the left hand side cylinder. We really, we have to block that nib off somehow, off from the air, from the atmosphere before you dare start this engine. Um, so we need to figure that out. And we've removed the car stop, the, but there's also tidying to do here because we have the servo body just dangling down near the rear shock. And we also have a module as well that was attached to the charcoal canister that's just dangling down. So we need to figure that out. And then we need to manipulate the titanium macroprobic system so it lines up with the lower mount. Oh, such a big, I mean, we've got tools, so many different kinds. Uh, yeah, this is turning into a mega complex upgrade. And then Christ just, and Christ just can't do it on his own. He's, he's tried, but he's just getting stuck and stuck and stuck. And uh, luckily the amazing dad, I uh, love dad to bits, love the dad in the world. He has loads of experience with previous motorcycles and we're just working this whole upgrade through together. And we're actually starting to make some progress. That's how the R90 looks without um, being tidied up. You can even see the rear wheel and that single side of the wheel. Look at that black acrylic can come with a carbon fiber tip. And being a classic race bike, or, and being a classic, classic super bike, a heart back to how super bikes used to be, black is very fitting because on the modern super bikes, they have that carbon fiber acrylic style, just you know, like this. So, very cool. And then we have our outstanding tail tidy as well. Um, by Evo Performance. Lovely. So now we're going to fit the top carbon fibre heat deflector. It's real nice that they made this especially for the BMW itself. And all I'm going to do is just thread the screws in by hand to avoid any chance of cross threading. And get a little bit excited with the tools. So it's nice just to feed the screw in by hand first. Make sure that it's running real nice. And I'm going to just use a quarter drive handle to get me a little further in. Still a little loose. So I'm going to swap over to a quarter drive ratchet now. Could get a bit of light on here. And just evenly tightening them up. And trying to make sure that the carbon is centered. Just feeling it starting to pinch the carbon. These screws have already had Loctite applied to them by a trapper bitch. There's no need for me to apply any. And again, I'm feeling them pinching the carbon. I don't need to just keep tightening until I can't tighten anymore or I will crack the carbon. Wow, I'm down. Yeah. Are you happy with it like that? Yeah, if you're happy. Can't really tighten it like that though. If I hide this, yeah. I 
here, I think I might have to extend on to it. But yeah, one's facing up, one's facing down there. Need a shorter extension on that. Go on to it. We've done a really nice finish here where the exhaust clamps on the BMW R19 Racer, a classic Superpoint. She has two exhaust clamps here. And what's nice is that the bolt through both exhaust caps are facing uh, down and the threads are at the top on both exhaust clamps. So it just looks uh, just really neat, really tidy. Uh, you know, you can argue you're not going to really see this area here once the R90 is on its side stand or off the paddock stand. But you know, when you know you've worked in this area, and you, you know, if you look in this area and you find that on the exhaust clamps that you've accidentally put the exhaust clamp, say this one, in such a way that the head of the bolt is at the top, but that's not. That the head of the bolt on the furthest exhaust clamps at the bottom, it, you just know it doesn't, you know, in your head, you know that just doesn't look very neat. Um, so that was cool, it was really easy to sort out. It was just a matter of loosening the bolt off completely, taking the bolt out, and then you can actually then. And then, if say the bolt is here at the top. If you loosen off the bolt and take it completely out, say the head of the bolt is at the top, then just turn the bolt the uh, other way around, and then you'll you'll tighten up the bolt in such a way that the head's now going to be at the bottom, just like the further exhaust clamp back there. So tidy. So now what you're going to work on is going to work on this area because there is actually a battery tray cover that lives in this area. So we're going to try and put it back on. Thanks for watching everybody at Loop Ride. So you could see, holy crap, the amount of effort required was absolutely huge. But we did it in the end, and that's all that is. Thanks for watching. The way we... The little rascal has spirit. That's awesome. This is the end of the trail for me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, kid.